What is up YouTube? This is Sweet Mildred again for you guys, aka my name is Carl and today I'm back with another High Stakes Fridays video. And in this edition I have pre-selected four hands that share some similarities to keep it a bit more focused uh, than like compared to my last video in which I browsed the full high stakes thread and just went with what popped up in my head. Uh, so this one should be a bit shorter, a bit more focused and just looking at four interesting hands that I have pre-selected. So let's jump right into the action. So the first hand is four-handed at the 10k no limit tables. We will have a cutoff open from Stefan to 2.5 BB and a 3 bet from Big Blind Limitless. He chooses to see bet for the one third ish kind of size. Uh, like there is a variety of options, one third pot is certainly fine, depends a bit on how you develop your strategy. So, one third pot. Uh, Stefan will need to be defending very wide. It's like it's not even one third pot, it's less. So Stefan needs to defend really wide versus sizing like this. And then the five of diamonds turn. Not the best turn for the three betting big blind. Um, like a king uh, would be a nice turn for the big blind, for example, but a five doesn't really improve any of his bluffs. Uh, but still, I would expect him to keep on barreling pretty big now, like on the turn, go with a more polarizing sizing. So barrel big on the turn with ace jack or uh, stronger hands. The big blind of course has those over pairs, the queens, kings and aces. And there are some semi bluffs he can barrel with. Uh, the five also gives those ace four suited, ace three suited hands a gut shot to barrel with. So I also expect those to uh, barrel aggressively uh, but yeah he he needs to slow down on the turn so he has that small c bet and then he's gonna need to check a big portion of his range on the turn so he will also need to think about how to defend on the turn so uh, he will <coughs> still have some jacks or some uh, slow play traps and some uh, weaker mate hands than a jack to uh, check all or check raise with on the turn Stefan, on the other hand, he needed to defend so wide on the flop that on this turn he can't just bet all his bluffs. That would be bluffing too often. Like he, he has all kinds of backdoor draws that he needs to float. He has a bunch of hands that he wants to bet for protection uh, and value. But if he bets all of them, then that would be something the big blind could exploit. So. What you see a solver do, what you see good players do, is just totally mixing it up. Stefan um, will, for example, 10-9 suit it. He will likely put that both in his betting range and his check back range. So we all learn that you like to bluff with your uh, semi-bluffs that have the highest equity. You use those to put more money into the pot since they have the highest chance of improving. But with the stack to pot ratio of a 3-bet pot, that can be a bit dangerous uh, because those hands will need to bet fold versus a check raise and that is super painful to have to bet fold that much equity. So those hands are gonna be split up between a bet and a check back. And when you check back, you get a river card that improves you sometimes. And when it's checked to you, you can still uh, put in that river bluff instead of bluffing it on the turn. So, I think good players, they try to mix it up everywhere and it also opens a lot of options on every street, in every single spot, as we will see in this video. As the team will be a 3-bet spot, C-bet call, and the turn goes check check, and then on the river, uh, <laughs> we see what happens when people think they can wrap every single hand. So, we have the check check. Limitless checks on the king. The king is a pretty good card for the big blind after a check check action So he will have improved with some kings and those will likely want to bet for value on the river um, 
He will have checked some jacks and I think at least the strongest of them would like to value bet themselves on the river. Um, if he has a smaller bet size in his strategy, like let's say he has a kind of dunk bet, one third pot bet on the river, then he can go pretty timber value and like basically value bet any jack, maybe even pocket tens, uh, stuff like that, uh, in order yeah, to get called by words, of course. So when he does check on the river to Stefan, his range seems really weak, uh, besides the occasional trap. Uh, but I'm not really sure how often people trap, like, okay, let, this is high stakes, so let's assume again that they play really well. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt for now. And uh, Stefan makes the interesting play of going all in. So, the weaker Limitless is, the, the thinner Stefan can do this for value. Let's say he uh, calls with a skin preflop because it's big blinds versus cutoff, so I would expect some calls with ace-king pre-flop. Um, he's gonna call the flop, turn goes check, check, and then done on the river, his ace-king is so often gonna be the strongest hand, so he jams and can, uh, he can jam and go all in with the ace-king for value and limitless. Um, he realizes that Stefan has to call really wide on the flop, and then on the river we'll still have some bluffs that maybe now decide to go for the very big bet. So pocket 8s and pocket 9s. Um, I don't really like the check call with pocket 9s on the river there. But maybe yeah, Limitless is afraid of getting exploited and well he needs to find some amount of bluff catchers if Stefan has a balanced river betting range. So you could argue about which bluff catchers are better, but if Limitless, for example, doesn't have any jacks anymore in his range, maybe he needs he needs to find some weak bluff catchers. Uh, the thing is a hand like 8-7 suited or 9-8 suited would be better uh, check calls for Limitless on the river since they block some hands like uh, pocket 8s that Stefan could have. Nines even blocks some bluffs if Stefan has 10 9 suited, Queen 9 suited, or something like that that he checks back with. Um, nines is actually not a good hand to have since they block some part of the bluffing range there and they don't block any value hands. But okay, that's what happened, that's what they did. Uh, maybe it's interesting that Stefan checked back with a set on the turn. Um, usually, like in a single way spot, I would never recommend this because there's still so much money left behind. But in a 3-bet spot, there's already more money in the middle. And even after you check back on the turn with your very strong hand, you can still get it in on the river. You can jam over a bet from big blind if he decides to uh, bet the king turn. Um, you can bet call the river when check to, or you can just jam it all in uh, yourself if you think that's the play that gets the most money, uh, that earns you the most money. So, yeah, it's, it's a thing I didn't really used to do very often, checking back a set on a board like this. Um, but yeah, in a true bet spot, um, there, there's some merit in checking, in slow, slow playing some strong hands sometime. Uh, especially like checking back on the turn, it's still easy to get the money in the middle, especially if you have the overbet jam, the river in your arsenal. So for Stefan, seems played fine, limitless. Well, I guess if you think Stefan is balanced and you need to find some bluff catches, pocket okay, nines, like uh, we discussed, probably not the best one, but maybe uh, it's the kind of call limitless needs to make based on his own uh, ranges in order to be not exploited. So yeah, these overbets on the river. Um, when I would see this, I would think like, this is never a bluff. Um, but the trickier and the more advanced players get, the more often they will also have some floats that don't bluff the turn and then need to bluff the river. And they can do so like by putting maximum pressure with the big overbet. So yeah, I think it depends a bit on your stakes and your opponent. More straightforward players, they, they are not really gonna bluff for this size. 
Um, but once it gets a bit trickier, well, yeah, then uh, everything can happen. So, up to the second hand. Let's see what this one was. Oh, yeah, so um, it's 50 hundred, so again, 10 KML, but effective stacks are only 50 big lines. Usually I skip these hands, but this fits the theme and the shorter stack doesn't really uh, change the analysis. Besides that it's, it's a min raise on the button, it's kind of a small 3-bet from the 50 big blind stack. Like I'm not really uh, well versed in shorter stack play as a 100 BB cash game player, but let's go with it. So we of course have Linus Love, the man, the myth, the legend. Katja also the man, the myth, the legend. Um, Open on the button, 3-bat, call, strong flop for the player who has all the ace, kings, aces and kings. And he goes for the one third pot c-bat, Linus makes the call, king turn. Um, not a very good turn for uh, the 3-batter, but because he c bet so small, uh, we can assume that he also will c bet some amount of kings so it's not like he never has kings here and there were only 50 blinds deep to start with so he doesn't really get punished too badly for maybe not having enough trips uh, on this unfortunate turn uh, so he's gonna do a lot of checking um, and Linus can do some stabs with king x for value and some bluffs um, and then the three river, we see a check, and then we get an all in from Linus Love, and Katja is gonna check all. So let's see their hands. So the queen jack off, and uh, bluff catching with the ace eight. So again, I can make similar comments as with the previous hand. Like on the turn, uh, we're probably not gonna be able to bet all the bluffs, although I think queen jack is a good hand to bluff it on the turn and jam the river because the queen and the jack they bluff some king combos and also bluff like the strongest uh, ace x bluff catchers like uh, ace queen and ace jack so i think this hand really works well already to start padding and bluffing on the turn already but okay we linus love checks it back and then on the river he goes for the overbat so again this implies that he's capable of checking back some kings um, but the three also pairs and Linus Love will have possibly a couple of 3x that all of a sudden now uh, also want to jam this river. And Katja, well, he needs to make some bluff catches. He is gonna have like some pocket pairs that are gonna be check folding anyways. Uh, maybe he also has a hand like Queen Jack or Queen 10 that's also gonna be check folding. So he will need to bluff catch with some ace x. So uh, when he calls with this hand, I can't really say whether he's calling too much or not. Uh, so the ace-8, his combo doesn't block any of the diamond draw. Uh, the 8 blocks king-8 suited. So that's like an added benefit. And the 8 does not block uh, hands like queen-jack, jack-10, queen-10 queen ten that uh, could be bluffing. So reasonable bluff catcher, reasonably played by both. Of course, like what else would you expect from uh, these two legends? Next hand. Oh, yeah, I thought preflop action was different, but it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's three bets from the blinds versus button or a limp re race. So, make a boy thin, limp. Call, no, not limp calls. He decides to limp in the small blind. MMA Sherdog is gonna isolate that limp and uh, small blind goes for the limp re race. MMA makes the call. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like a blind tree betting a uh, button open. Although the, the big blind isolating range will be a bit tighter and stronger uh, likely than a button open. So. It's kind of a tighter range for, for MMA Sherdog. Um, this board, not amazing, but uh, the small blind, the three better, the Limpy Razor has so many over pairs and stuff that he wants to bet. 
Um, so we go through a, not one third, a bit bigger, but like reasonably, reasonably small bed. You can do this with high frequency. MMA will also need to defend with a very high frequency. So we have a C bet and a call. This turn, not a good one for the three better. Connects very well with MMA's range. And it's gonna be checking back the turn. Again, similar arguments as in the previous two hands. MMA is gonna have a lot of unpaired hands, hands that will need to bluff at some point, and he will bluff some of them on the turn, bluff some of them on the river. Uh, with a strong draw, he's gonna be uh, screwed if he can't bet call it, uh, facing a check jam, so that's something to keep in mind. I think uh, small blind to three better. Uh, we'll be check jamming some over pairs here and uh, some, some draws himself or stuff like that. So the threat is real and versus a small bet, MMA needs to float like I think all broadways with a backdoor gut shot and a queen and uh, ace jack, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, he, he has a lot of potential bluffs to choose from, uh, even though the five uh, improved some of his hands. He, he will still have uh, bluffs left, like hands that will need to bluff at some point. Interesting about this board is that it's only 8 high, so MMA benefits a bit more from betting for protection. He has some weak pairs that would like to bet and pick up the pot instead of giving the 3 better uh, the chance to hit an overcard and improve to a stronger pair. But, um, turn, check, check. Ace will hit the three better, so I expect him to bet this ace himself reasonably often, at least with his strongest aces, maybe like ace jack or a queen or better. I think he should pick 60% pot or um, larger as a bet size. It doesn't really make sense for him to go for a block bet here. I think he just needs to value bet ace x and check his other hand. So he's gonna check. And MMA is gonna go all in. So on this board, I think it's a bit less likely that MMA, MMA will be checking back a lot of sets. So the overbet jam, like the value doesn't really come from turn slow plays, but MMA will be hitting two pair with the ace x or he could just have a, a strong ace-x, like ace-queen, that he decides to pick, uh, to go all in with for a really thin value. And uh, make a boy Finn makes the bluff catch with 8-7. Um, I guess 8-7 is a fine bluff catcher. It would block the 9-7 that MMA could possibly have and could possibly check back. It blocks Ace-8, like it as the 8 is a blocker effect for some strong hands. Uh, and I think it's interesting that MMA goes all in with the Ace-Queen here. I don't know if it's really a GTO equilibrium play, but the weaker small blind checking range is on the river, like the thinner MMA can go for value. So. Yeah, versus straightforward players, you can get really out of line with those river jams. Uh, versus more tricky players, they might uh, put in some traps to prevent you from doing that. And taking that thought a bit further, like if your villain isn't very tricky, uh, you also don't need to put in a lot of traps, like because you don't need to protect your range versus the big overbets. Anyways, that this is high stakes for you. Like I, I hope. This is not giving you too much fancy play syndrome, but it, it could be some food for thought. Like, uh, it's got me thinking because I don't think I have ever in my life jammed the river in spots like this. Not even with Ace Queen in this particular spot, but with a line like Seabat Call, check, check, and then check, and then a river jam for a couple of times, probably. I should uh, start doing that too, I think. Only when I'm gonna win the hand, of course. So, last hand for you guys. What was this one? Okay, so button open, small blind 3-bet. 
So it is about 100 big blinds deep, uh, 5k NL. No, sorry, I said small blind 3-bet, I meant big blind 3-bet. So yeah, interacting very well with both ranges, but hitting the 3-better a bit harder. Stefan, I think you went for the half pot. Again, multiple strategies possible. Stefan went for half pot, like, fine. We get a call. Can check, check. Same spiel as always. Like, if give me up pets all his bluffs, then he's gonna be bluffing too much and the check jam is gonna become a option that is just way too juicy for Stefan. So, expect give me up to uh, check back some amount of queen jack, some amount of jack nine suited, uh, which will be important on this river because the jack nine suited hits here. Stefan bets half pot. So again, this can be done with a hand. Still has pocket checks, uh, maybe even a stand. And for this, uh, like he picks the half pot, I think I would be more inclined to go for a smaller bet or a tiny a bet that's a tiny bit bigger. So one third bot or 60% bot or something like that and try to divide my range like that. But Stefan thought his hand was worth a half bot or that's just the bet size he's using with his range. He bets and he faces the jam. So I think on this board uh, the button could be checking back some strong hands uh, on the turn. Uh, he could also river the jack-9 suited that gets there and he likely needs to jam 8-7 suited for value uh, because Stefan chose the half pot. Like likely he also has a bigger bet in his range that he uses for his stronger hands. So if give me up improves the two pair on the river uh, with the 8-7 it's gonna be strong enough to value jam. And we get a bluff catch from Stefan. With the ace 10, give me up as the ace 9 suited. So, uh, some thoughts. I think on the flop versus half pot, this is probably a tiny bit too loose, but okay. Then on the turn, give me up can, could decide to start bluffing right there, but he uh, decided to postpone his bluff to the later street. And then on the river, Stefan thinks his on hand is strong enough to bet for value. It's, it's borderline, but probably fine-ish. And Give Me Up decides to bluff jam this combo. So as we discussed, he's gonna have some hands to bluff, uh, to raise the river with for value. So he needs to come up with some bluffs. There's a lot of possible bluffs, like any pair, like any 8x, 10x could be a possible bluff since they always block some value and uh, work fine like that. So whether ace 9 is too loose as a bluff or not, it's, it's kind of hard to say. It depends on how Give Me Up constructs his other bluffs. Uh, but again, this is like a spot where if I bet check bet there and villain jams the river This is a spot that's probably very under bluffed and lower stakes um, But gets bluffed more if you move up to higher stakes where players get more sophisticated and trickier or maybe just spazzier and then uh, stuff like this happens so that's it, that's the, the fourth hand. I think this, these were interesting hands, in my opinion. Um, if you have any comments on my analysis or if you wanna trash talk some of these moves that these guys made, like let me know in the comments, tell me what you would have done differently, uh, which play you liked, which play you hated, and I'll see you guys back in the next one. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button to stay up to date, hit the notifications to stay really up to date and feel free to share this video with any of your friends that might enjoy it. This would really help me out a lot as a starting YouTube channel to gain some momentum. See you in the next one.